Part 3, tearing down a 488 Mark 1 on Tetracan Super Monoblock, your friendly neighbourhood tearing apart 4 tracks channel. As you can see, I've already done some reconnaissance on this, taking it to bits, and in that process I actually didn't put these fader caps back. Does that matter? Probably not. I'll remind you that I have done that when we get to that stage. Most of the knobs and fader caps are off this, but I'll take off these ones just to show that, in my experience on this model, they come off pretty easily. You will need to remove those to get the mixer out later. That's going to present you with something like this. Uh, a couple of fun things to note. There were slight cracks in this case, like here and here and when I received this unit all three of these mounting posts had come off. I wonder if you can see that the ones that are there are a slightly different colour of plastic. That's because I sawed them off a Tascam Porta 1 case that I wasn't using and I put them on with a little super glue and spin rail welded spin welded, spin welded around those. Spin welding's a good technique for fixing plastics. I've demonstrated it quite a bit in my channel, so check that out. Hopefully by now I've already published a video where I fixed this door again with spin welding. Without further ado, let's start to take this apart. Let's begin by taking off this pitch control and the transport buttons. I haven't put back in all of the screws. You can see I've got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them, but there's another one, two, three, four, which using the power of mathematics, I can tell you adds up to 11. This one here has got a cable tie, so I've written C slash T to remind myself when I reassemble it that that needs to be there. That'll just stop those cables from getting in the way too much when you reassemble it. And I'll stop the video and come back when I've removed these screws. Um, only thing that I'll say before that is it's good to write on these. You can see that I've reminded myself which machine this is from, arrow point where the screws are. I think in particular you could you know, lose track of this bit of shielding and go, what is that from? So I've written shield and arrows to point where that shielding goes and then on the shielding I've written it's from a 488 Mark 1 and it attaches to the switch PCB. With all the screws removed, then that's going to lift off. Some models your pitch PCB is going to be a separate detachable thing but this one just dangles via this little ribbon cable. Have a look at my other videos on the 244 I demonstrate spraying these with contact cleaner and compressed air and desoldering them, resoldering them as necessary. But if you've got a problem with an unresponsive set of switches, you can do that. These button arrays lift out. Set this one because I sort of accidentally glued it in when I was fixing that stop button. I think you can see there's a bit more spin welding there. I've used bits of zip tie cable to create a new hinge. Again, that's something I demonstrate in another video on a 244, but same principles will apply for any removable button set like that. So one thing to say before we have a look at this door, the pitch control cap will come off when you remove that board there, so make sure you don't lose that. Mechanism here, two screws. This side's got a spring in it, that side doesn't. Once you remove these bits, and the door just comes out through those slots, you sort of like lift it that way and then out. When you come to replace it, then what you do is you put that like so, so that this bit of the spring is facing up the way. Put them both in loosely, tighten them up once the door's in, and then you would get like a screwdriver or something, push that part of the spring up and over that arm and that is what creates the flipping action. Next, let us detach these master boards. What are they labelled as? Yeah, monitor A and monitor B PCBs. They're the ones with all the bus selection switches on it, the effects and cue and phone levels and the two master faders as well, obviously. They have one screw at each end. I've removed those screws now. We can detach the cables. There's one down here, KK Molex 
type that just fits into a slot in this bottom left corner of the mixer. When you're reassembling that, make sure that that goes into, see there's a little um, nook there. If it, that cable's up here, then that will stop the case shutting properly. There's a cable tie here. And then this cable here is going to your effect sends and group outs board here. That lifts out in one unit. There's a little bridge guy here. If you needed, for instance, to be able to solder in there, then you can get a flat head screwdriver and pry that out. Do the same this side. Practice easier from here. It comes away like that. That gives you access if you want to clean any of this. The way you could open that up if it was very dirty is much the same way as I've demonstrated the um, prying apart and deep cleaning of faders for a 244 because they work in a similar way where they're kind of vertically mounted with the faders coming off at right angles like this. There are three screws that attach this little daughter board with the effects and group outs on it. I've only got two of them plugged in. With those screws removed, it'll just lift out. And we've got this metal tab up here. It's holding in place a daughter board to which all these uh, quarter inch inputs are attached. Up here is cable tie. That was uh, keeping a cable coming across from the monitor PCBs to the group PCB in place. And then over here, connecting this bit of metal to ground via this tab of this shielding. And then there's another three screws in the middle, except I haven't got them in at the moment. I'll come back once those are removed. Just before I remove that, notice that I have written on it which model it came from to expect that there's a shield tab. That's what I'm saying that is to go there and a cable tie to go there. Just leave notes to yourself as you go along about how to reconstruct the machine. The shielding is held in place with one, two, three screws. And underneath that you can see I've put circles around the holes for the screws where, which were holding the shielding in place so that when I reconstruct I don't accidentally put screws in those places but there's a holes for another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws in addition to that. With those screws removed that will lift out. At that point you would typically see that there are plastic caps on top of these switches. In fact I've already been in here and cleaned this board. I've already pried apart, deep cleaned, reassembled and resoldered all of these faders because they were absolutely filthy. But if you're not sure how to clean a mixer I have videos about that, albeit they're demonstrated on other models but it's the same process. If they're really dirty you put some service all 10 in first, blow that out with the compressed air. If they're looking not too bad then I tend to use deoxit which is more expensive by the can but it cleans and lubricates at the same time so it's a bit quicker uh, providing that the mixture isn't too dirty to begin with this one was really dirty so i did both processes and the shielding will lift out and this uh foam thingy that stops dirt from getting into the faders can be lifted out at that point you'd be pretty free to give this a deep clean if it was needed i've actually already cleaned this there should be a video about that up and that's us. So um, if I come across any particular electrical issues focusing on this machine then I will document the process for the channel but hopefully you can figure out from other videos I've done about electrical faults and other models how to fix any problems that you're having with your 488. If not leave a comment and I will try and get back to you with some suggestions about how to do that. Um, if you find this useful I make these kind of videos quite often um, at the time of writing I haven't done a great deal of music or tutorials about recording but that is something I'm intending to get into so please consider subscribing if that's something you would like to see more of and uh, thanks for watching.